Aren't these pretty? Today I'm going to show you how you can go from sticks like this to pretty charms like this. I was inspired by Japanese emma, which are wooden plaques like this that you can hang in a shrine. So I decided to make something kind of inspired, but not exactly the same. And I'll show you exactly how I did it in this video. So these sticks come from hanging, folding doors like this. We got a bunch of them from a neighbor, I think. See? They come from here. One of them got left out in the rain. We didn't use it, so it kind of fell apart. But it turns out that these are really useful for many things. And that's what we use for this project. So I have a bunch of sticks left over from the doors. If yours got left outside in the rain like mine did, then they might be kind of messed up. So I took a little bit of sandpaper and smoothed some of these down a little bit. Some of them were okay already, though, like this one. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just did a little sandpaper. Once you do that, you can mark where you want to cut them. So see, I did that here, here. I've been enjoying separating these out into three sections. But, you know, you can do however many you want. And if you just want ones that are like, you know, one segment, you can even do a whole one that's just like this, not cut at all. It's really up to you. I'm not too precise um, with how I separate these out. I just think, you know, I experiment basically what would be fun. Here you could see I have a lot of different sizes. Like on this one, the middle section is the biggest and then this one is short, this one is shorter. You can do three equal sections. You can do two long sections with one little baby in the middle or have the biggest one on the bottom or not use the whole thing use only you know two-thirds of it and then cut that into three pieces i like to experiment like i said and see what happens and you know depending on what you want to show what you want to paint you know maybe you might want uh something specific but once you draw your lines then you can cut. I'm going to go ahead and cut right now, and then I'll come back once I have them cut. Alrighty, so I've made my cuts. This is the saw that I use. By the way, if you don't have a saw like this, I highly recommend it. I find it much better than, you know, your sort of standard hand saw. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind when you're cutting. Make sure to keep the orientations the same way so you don't want to get these sort of flipped upside down. Remember where you cut because they'll look better. They'll look more like they fit together and like they were part of one thing when you keep them oriented the same way. So remember which one was on the top, which one was in the middle, and which one was on the bottom. And the other thing is remember which, which side right goes with which side because they will... One thing I found is they don't quite look, you see right here, they don't quite look as good when you get them all mixed up like this. So just remember what, as you're cutting to keep them oriented in the same, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, and not flip, not get these flip sides all mixed up because it might look not as good. The next thing that we're going to do is paint. Oh no, wait. Before we paint, we have to drill holes in. This is another reason why you want to make sure to keep uh, to keep these orientations and remember which side goes up, which side goes down. Because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a hole here, here, and here. I'm going to go do that, and then I'll be back. Now we've got our holes drilled in each segment. Wow, look at that. I kind of winged it generally in the center. It's maybe like one centimeter below from the top of each segment. That's mainly to prevent it from breaking or cracking. If you do get some cracking up here, you can always use a little bit of Elmer glue, let it dry, and then the paint will seal it in 
This is my handy dandy mechanical hand hand drill. No electricity required, no batteries required. Five dollars at the transfer station. Highly encourage everyone to get one of these if you can find one. It looks like we used, I think we used one eighth. This is a one eighth inch drill bit, but you know, it depends on what kind of um, string or whatever you're planning to use. Uh, you know, if you're using yarn, maybe you want a bigger hole. Totally up to you. You're using something else, fishing line, or maybe some wire. One eighth seems to just seems to work fine. Uh, the next step is going to be uh, painting, and you might ask, well, why didn't I paint these first? In fact, I have done that before, but if you paint one stick first, it's very easy, of course, but then when you're cutting, you might, uh, you know, you have these areas, so you have to go back in and paint, and then you have this that you have to do, and it might chip and just take the paint out. So what I've discovered is that it's better to do all the cutting and drilling first and then uh, paint on top of that. Uh, another little tip is I like to do these in batches. So here I'm only doing two at a time, but you know, in general for each step, it's like you have to get the saw out, you have to get your drill out. So, you know, I like to do a bunch saw then do a bunch drill, do a bunch paint, and then I have them sort of ready to go. All right, next step is going to be painting, and I'll come back and show you how that goes. So here I have the uh, three different kinds of gold or bronze that I used for the, the background color. I can show you them individually so you can see. This is the antique gold base. It's really like a brown, like a bronze color. And this one. Folk art, brushed metal, acrylic paint. This one is interesting because it's, uh, it's matte. It's not shiny. And then this one is just Liquitex acrylic color gold. I'll put the names of these items in the in the description. And we're all done painting. So on the left we've got the plaid and on the right We've got the Liquitex. Let's compare them kind of side to side. The Liquitex can come on quite strong. You can see how, just how shiny it is. I really love the effect of this one. It looks a little yellowish on this, but in the sunshine it looks, just looks gorgeous. Because the Liquitex can come on kind of strong, you can actually, I tried to do these little baby ones, and with these, I did it kind of lighter. You can compare. It gives more of that, that brushed effect that's similar to the, to the plaid. So it is possible to use the, the Liquitex and not have it be kind of so... looking so much like tinfoil, as I like to think about it. But maybe, maybe you like that effect. Maybe that's what you like to go for. A couple of tips when painting. Uh, I like to have like something like this or like a needle handy so that if you paint over your hole you can punch it back out again. Of course if you, you know, if it doesn't quite come out perfect or you can't get your string through it, you can always go back with your drill later on. Always make sure that you have your, you know, your handy dandy newspaper. This is the brush that I used. I just found it. Uh, in our brush pile and always make sure when you're done to clean your brush immediately afterward so you don't ruin it and if you don't want to get paint on your hands wear gloves let's see if I can show one more comparison shot 
in some light. And here you can kind of see it, the difference between the two of them a little better. I'm back with some swatches I prepared for you guys. A couple things before I get into talking about these various inks on these that I forgot to mention from the applying the gold coat part. First of all is uh, I found that I get the prettiest results when I keep my strokes up and down going with the grain of the wood. If you kind of make your strokes go all over the place or vary them, it kind of turns out not as pretty. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. The other thing is, you know, I just happen to have these colors with me and that's what I ended up using. Like the antique gold, which is this one. I got that, I found that at the, at a secondhand store. This one, the, which is the, what is this? The metallic spray paint. That's just what they happen to have at my local hardware store. And then the gold, uh, the Liquitex gold, that's what they happen to have at my local craft store. Uh, so use whatever you have, you know, if look, I like looking in secondhand stores, I encourage you to do the same. Sometimes they have gold. I got a really pretty gold tempura at a secondhand store that I used on wood once. Uh, it came out really, really pretty. So whatever you have, try it out. Um, I do encourage acrylics over spray paint, and you'll see why in a second. I'll show you how the black, uh, how the how the inks behave uh, on the spray paint. Um, so I do prefer acrylics over spray paint, but you know what? Use what you got. Okay, on to these. So sorry if this is a little bit cryptic, but basically from the top to the bottom, I tried these various different black paints that I have. This is the antique gold. This is the uh spray paint which i just showed and then this is the liquitex gold so you can see how each of these look and you know you can take a still if you need to so you can take a look so the first the top one is uh ink stick and that's this chinese ink stick this is what i use to make my uh bamboo and other kinds of art in in general on when i'm working on paper and it's the first thing that I tried when I switched to uh, to working on this wood, but I wasn't super, super happy with how it came out, especially on this one. One of these, one of the petals there didn't even come out at all. If you make it dark enough, it seems to be okay on the acrylics. The second one is Rapidograph. It looks like that. That's the second one. And that's what I used, there it is on the antique gold, the spray paint, and on the Liquitex gold. And that's, this is the one that actually I ended up using uh, to, uh, on the previous uh, sticks that I showed you. These ones that I showed before. And it's probably what I'm going to use again. But I don't know, I mean, the, the ink stick came out okay. It's up to you, use what you have. Uh, the third one is Higgins. Looks like this. And, you know, you'd think India ink would all be the same, but actually there's a lot of varieties, apparently. So there it is over there. That one. And that one. And I had to do, like, a couple of coats of these, and even then they're kind of pale, and they didn't really come out great. The next one is Delta. Uh, creative ceram coat. This is a black acrylic. It makes a really nice dark mark. It's this fat one over here. My one problem with it is that, um, so I use Chinese painting brushes like this. You can all, sometimes you can find them called uh, calligraphy brushes, but um, they're, this is what I used to do my bamboos and other things like that. And acrylic just really gunks up in them and is really hard to get out, really hard to control. Definitely not what I'm used to when it comes to working with ink that flows nice and smoothly. So if you want to get, you know, your delicate little bamboos, you're going to need a little bit of practice or something with the acrylic. And I really don't like using, I mean, I don't even like using the India ink on these brushes because it comes out so much harder than the, than the ink stick or uh, 
also sumi that's the sort of japanese name that you, you see sometimes for uh asian ink that comes uh already in uh liquid form sometimes but also it comes in ink stick form so so yeah i mean acrylic will get you that dark color but it won't necessarily i don't like using it for my brushes and I find it kind of hard to draw with, to paint with, but, you know, you might have a different experience depending on what you want to draw and your experience and what kind of brushes you're using. The next one, the sort of the medium line, is Tempura. Pearl Art Artworks Tempura Black. There it is. Over there. Over there. And over there. It works okay pretty good definitely it's also kind of thick but not as thick as the as the acrylic of course the next one is polymer paints washable poster paint also in black this one is definitely the loser because it's really pale and it comes out almost green you can really see it here I can show you. I have a couple of wood over here. Look at that. That's how it came out. These are both. These are tempuras on the spray paint. I'm really not happy with how they came out. Let me see if I have another one of those. Because it's one thing, you know, these swatches are one thing, but then, you know, making a small mark. But then when you're trying to do something bigger. Come on, birdie, focus up. You start to see some of the limitations, especially as you sort of move the, uh, the ink or the paint across the, the surface there. So I don't recommend, I don't recommend this one. And then the last line. This one, this one this one are just black sharpie and sharpie of course works beautifully regardless of what the surfaces that you're doing it on top of uh, and depending on the design that you have in mind sharpie might work perfectly for you um, I'd have to you know if I was doing bamboo with sharpie I'd have to do something slightly different from what I'm used to but again sharpie almost everyone has them in their you know, in their drawers and piles of markers, so that's a really reliable option. So that's it for all the black colors. I also made some red colors, and I'll show those to you momentarily. We are back with the red. These are just on the other side of the blacks. I did one side black and one side red. Red on gold is a classic combo that you see in a lot of Chinese painting. It looks stunning. So, and I had a few reds on hand, so I wanted to go ahead and show you. So the top one is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay Red. I remember I got, when I got this, this is an expensive ink. <laughs> Whoa, losing my, losing my paints. So there it is on the antique gold. There it is on the spray paint. And it, as you can see, it barely came up on the spray paint even after loads of options loads of uh coats and what's this this is on the gold it looks very nice actually on the gold on paper i'm not a huge fan of it it comes out kind of pink which is weird but on these it looks it looks very nice especially on the liquid tax gold i think it looks very very nice the next one is the one i knocked over Let's find it here in the grass. All right. The next one is Delta Creative Ceram Coat Bright Red Transparent 02503. Again, you're working with acrylic, so you're going to have all the same issues that I talked about before with acrylic. There it is on the antique, on the spray paint, and on the liquid text. This one is interesting. It's the most orangey of them. Most orangey. The next one is Pro Art Artworks Red Tempura. And that's the, the sort of fat line here. There. And there. Looks very nice. Sticks. 
nice red color and uh, but again I don't know how you feel about using it on your brushes and then the last one is just red sharpie there 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 red sharpie always works we'll paint on anything so one thing to keep in mind is that these swatches are not quite the same as when you're doing a full painting, right? When you're dragging your stroke across the thing. So here's that. I had a little bit left over, so I decided to use it to show what it might look like. A little bit of this, these reds left over. So here, this is the acrylic, the one that's kind of orangey. And it seems to work okay here, but then, you know, I started to apply it on the gold. This is the Liquitex gold. And it came out, again, orangey, which is kind of interesting. But I did have to do a couple of uh, coats. And it didn't really give the, pre the precision that I'm used to from ink. It's kind of, came out kind of thick and gloopy. And then on the other side, this bottom one is the tempura the red tempura pro art artworks and the top one is the bombay india ink the colors are pretty similar they're quite i think this one actually has the best color this one is kind of faded and you can see i had to do a couple of coats on this one and it was still quite see-through so i wasn't too too happy with how that one came out i think the the tempura is the winner here still a little little awkward to work with if you're used to working with ink but you know it all depends on your design all depends on your design i'm a fancy lady i like to do bamboo so you know and i've got a way that i do it but your thing it might be fine this is again just to show that you know make sure to test out a full design and see which one you like not just do swatches Once you've got your ink selected and you're ready to paint, you can go ahead and paint directly on your woods, or you can sort of plan out a little bit. And what I did here is I sort of outlined the woods I was using, did them sort of the, the one on the bottom, the one on the middle, and the one on the top that I wanted to do, and just sketched a few examples. I even did some on the side just to see how different things would look on this shape. Uh, you have a long piece of paper you might not need to do it diagonally like I did. So after a few practice draws like here I actually did more practice draws than these but these are the main ones I did. I painted my sticks. And this is the this is the stuff I used. Now, hilariously, I was getting totally set to tie these all together with a little metal wire is when I realized no bottom holes. I completely forgot after trying to be so careful. I didn't put any bottom holes in, so there's no way to actually attach these two. So now I have to do the thing that I said was bad, which is drill after painting. Um, hopefully I can do it carefully and not get it too messed up. So I'm going to go back and drill uh, these holes, and then I'll probably tie them together with twist ties, and then I'll show you the final product. Ta-da! So I drilled all my holes, I took my grocery store plastic bag twist ties, I stripped them of the, of the paper, strung them together, and used pretty yarn on the top. So now these are ready to go to someone, if you want to give them as a gift, if you want to hang them up, hang them up wherever you want. They're really fun, looking beautiful in the sun. Now you know how to make these. So I hope you enjoyed this and you get to make your own fun projects. 
Thanks again for watching. Till next time.